liked it. Okay, so here's the main page you guys can see. There's a section here where I introduce myself and go through like the game plan. There's a download here that shows you the uh, kind of how the course is organized. If you're the kind of person who likes to check things off a list, I know you are because I'm the same way and we are a lot alike, then you're gonna love being able to download that framework. And then it just gives you, um, it prompts you to the very next module. So let's say we're gonna go to uh, medical abbreviations and terms. Well, this is a really valuable lesson because as soon as you start school, as soon as you start clinical, people are going to be talking in a complete new language. And I want you to understand some of the basics of that language. And I have to share a funny story, you guys. This was in the group the other day. I think some of you saw it, but it was just so, it was just an adorable story. And it reminded me that we can't take for granted how, um, how much knowledge that we attain and how much we don't know when we're very, very new. Um, and I was that student. I was that really new student. I had never touched a patient. I had never been in a hospital except, you know, to go visit a family member or something like that. I was never a CNA, any of that. So I get it. When this student told this story, I thought, oh my gosh, that's exactly something I would have done. But I just thought it was really brave of her to share the story and kind of laugh at herself a little bit. So she's a CNA and she's a brand new CNA. And she told a story about how she would listen and report and just try to, you know, absorb information, which is fantastic way to learn. And she kept hearing the nurses talk about this, what she thought at the time was a medication that all the patients were on or most of the patients were on. And so finally it just really got to her. She finally went to the nurse and said, what's this medication room air that everybody is taking? And the nurse looked at her like, well, what are you talking about? And the CNA had been hearing room air, but the nurse was saying room air, which is what we say when we're saying that somebody doesn't need any supplemental oxygen, they're just breathing the air in the room, they're on room air. But the student, without any knowledge of that, just translated that into a medication name and was really confused. So I just thought that was adorable story and just a great reminder that as you learn and as you gain knowledge, there's going to be other people that don't have as much knowledge as you have. And let's share our knowledge and passion with them with grace and compassion, okay? Because I just thought that was a fabulous story. Okay, so we're looking at jargon, you guys. Sorry, I got off on a little tangent. So this module is going to, it's a video and I think I can play, hopefully the sound doesn't come over, but there's just, it just goes through a lot of different abbreviations that you're going to hear um, or see in a medical record, things like that. Uh, I'm just skipping around a little bit. There's a whole bunch. And so that you don't have to scribble notes constantly, hello, there's a lovely download right here. This boot camp includes so many downloads, you guys. You will have a great little resource library when you are uh, getting into clinical and going uh, through your nursing school education. So I'm gonna go back to categories. And as you can see, it's broken out into modules. So module one is all about talking like a nurse. So that first module was that a medical abbreviation section that we just glanced at. Well, then there's a whole module on communication, how to communicate like a professional in the healthcare setting. A lot of this has to do with the way you call a cardiologist in the middle of the night to tell them that the patient has gone into atrial flutter with a blood pressure of 80. How do you do that so that you get your point across and you um, share the most important information about the patient? Also about giving um, end of shift report and receiving report. That's a whole module of its own. Even as an experienced nurse, I've worked in the ICU for about nine years. I work in recovery room now, but I still occasionally work in the ICU and I still see nurses with 10, 20 years experience that cannot give a clear, succinct, effective end of shift report. And I want you guys to be able to do it first semester in clinical like a total boss, okay? And then there's quizzes at the end of each module 
just to test your understanding so that if you're not grasping a concept, you know what to go back and review. So that whole first module, all about communication, talking like a nurse. The second module is called Think Like a Nurse. And in this module, you guys, this is the stuff that your professors wish you knew from day one and probably don't have a lot of time to teach it to you because they have to teach so much uh, core content, fundamentals, assessment, how to give meds safely, how to give injections. They've got huge tasks and all this background stuff is there, but it's really hard for it to get assimilated in. And a lot of times students are kind of left figuring it out on their own, which adds to the stress. So we're gonna talk about developing clinical judgment. So what is this about, you guys? So clinical judgment, and I'm just gonna pull to a random spot in the, uh, in the module here, is all about um, thinking like a nurse. So um, I take you through this module and give you kind of some background information about how to think like a nurse, how to develop clinical judgment, how do nurses know what to do in the clinical setting. So that will be really very helpful for you guys. And then um, let's see, we were in think like a nurse. Sorry, I went back too far. Um, understanding the nursing process. A lot of schools are teaching the nursing process. Most schools teach the nursing process. It is a core foundation of nursing. And little tip, a ton of test questions can be answered by you thinking through, well, what's the next step in the nursing process? What would I do? So we're gonna go through that. And then the Tanner model is a little bit more, uh, I'm not gonna say it's more modern because I, I believe that uh, Dr. Tanner wrote her model a while ago, but it's being used more now. And so a lot of students were struggling with assimilating and taking the Tanner model and applying it. So I talk you through that as well. So that if you are in a program that really relies heavily on the Tanner model, you'll get it. You'll already be there when your instructor starts talking about it and expects you to use it in clinical. And then understanding the nurse's role, also very important and demystifying nursing diagnoses. You guys, we struggled with this so much first semester. Nursing diagnoses are weird, I'm not gonna lie, but after this module, you'll at least have some understanding of what they are and maybe not be so frustrated by them, hopefully. Okay, so that's module two, think like a nurse, and then we get into act like a nurse. You guys, this is a super fun module. Um, I take you through some things that I wish I had known because again, I was that super, super brand new student, that new zero, I got into nursing because I was in advertising before this, you guys. So total huge career shift. And I got kind of tired of doing advertising and um, writing all the time, even though I love to write. It's, um, you know, there are times when being a writer is kind of a socially isolating kind of endeavor. And I wanted to do something where I was around people, where I wasn't tied to a desk all day. I wanted to be out and about doing things with my hands and making a difference and nursing seemed like a great fit because I also wanted to have that lifelong learning. So when I started vital signs, what? I knew what a, te a normal temperature was, but you guys, that's about it. I maybe knew what a normal heart rate was because you know, when you work out, you check your heart rate. But when I had an exam that said, your patient's blood pressure is 180 over 110, what is your next course of action? And some of those actions were eh, we'll do, you know, we'll do some moderate treatment and other actions were, oh my gosh, this is an emergency. I didn't know, like I knew 180 was high, but I didn't know if it was scary high. So I just wanna have a little module here where we talk about vital signs and when you might, in a general sense, get concerned about things, okay? And then we talk about care plans, um, how to approach a traditional care plan style. Your school might do something different but this exercise will still teach you the foundations of what goes into the thought process behind a care plan. And then we get into a whole thing about clinical and answer your most common clinical questions, okay? Very important there. Okay, so let's go back to categories. And module four, again, is that dosage calculations component. You guys, this is a meaty, meaty component. We start 
very basic, you guys. This is step by step by step. We're gonna start at the very beginning, review what dimensional analysis is. It might've been a while since you took it in chemistry. We're gonna talk about medication administration abbreviation so that you can read a dosage calculation questions. What does QID mean? Okay, so we'll go through that. Uh, rounding rules, decimal usage, how a medication order is structured. Again, you have to be able to read these correctly to answer the questions. And then we get started with level one and we go all the way up to level six. And after that, I take you through a whole section on covering tricky questions and all the ways your professors are gonna try really hard to trick you. I'm gonna help you figure out how to analyze those questions, break them down so that you cannot be tripped up. The way I teach dosage calculations is a step-by-step -step method where you ask three questions every time you do a question. And when you ask yourself those three questions, you will do the question correctly. And whenever students email me and they're having trouble and they're struggling with dosage calculations problems, it's because they're skipping those three questions and just trying to go straight to the calculation. So I really wanna get that habit ingrained in you that you have to think through it because a lot of these questions, they're not just math, they're critical thinking as well. So we'll be talking about that. And then um, a few other things there at the bottom, talking about calculating percent weight loss, reconstitutions, and then we do a review and have a big quiz at the end. So that's an awesome module, one of the biggest, well, it is the biggest, and it is definitely one of my favorites. Module five is all about learning like a nurse. So in module five, you guys, we talk about some NCLEX strategies. The NCLEX, as you all know, is the licensing exam that you must take when you graduate, but you have to start studying for it right now because your nursing school exams are written in the same format. So you have to be able to understand how NCLEX questions work and how to answer them. So they're very strange. Um, real quickly, they typically have four very good answers and one answer is just a little bit better than all the others. So it's really hard for students to get used to thinking critically in that way and I'm gonna help you do that. Um, study tips, the latte method, if you guys listen to my podcast or read my website, you might have already heard about the latte method. It's also in my book, Nursing School Thrive Guide. We go through that here as well. And then we have introduction to critical thinking, which is again, some of those components that your professors might not have time to teach, but they really, really want you to know it. And then my best tip for how to know what's going to be on the test. Okay, and then we'll go back to our categories. And now we are on review like a nurse. So another one of my favorite modules here, you guys, is a quick review of some of the most important things to uh, go back and look at from anatomy and physiology. Fluid shifts, fluid compartments, osmolarity, uh, oncotic pressure, capillary bed pressure. You guys all remember those things from a &P, but we need to review them because you're actually going to put them into action. So in this module, I go through all the fluid compartments, fluid shifts, all that stuff to refresh your memory. You're going to use this information a lot. And look, there's even a download. You guys, there's downloads all over the place in this uh, boot camp. And then we have, uh, what else is in review like a nurse? Let's just take a quick look. So we have fluid compartments, we have electrolytes. And um, just speaking of electrolytes real quick, I'll show you when I come back on screen that if you use our early bird special and use the discount code that I'll point out again, um, it ends July 19th, but it gets you a discount on the course, $8 discount and a free electrolytes bundle, which I sell for $12. So that's like a $20 value right there just by getting into boot camp by I think that's Sunday, July 19th. So we can look at electrolytes, you guys. I love this module. It's so comprehensive. Um, let me just, you know, it doesn't just talk about the levels and that's where a lot of students get so hung up on having to, you know, memorizing what the normal level for potassium is. That is like one one hundredth of what you need to know about potassium. We're gonna go through you know, facts about the electrolytes and uh, we're gonna talk about tonicity as well and what the electrolytes do in the body. So here's an example, hypokalemia versus hyperkalemia. Some really important information that you would wanna know about these electrolytes. Um, calcium fun facts, I bet you didn't know calcium had fun facts. So anyway, that's a fabulous module. 
on um, reviewing the electrolytes. And then we also go into acid base balance and even dive a little bit into how the body, um, how you might see that in a patient's physiology. You might not use it a ton in first semester, but you will have patients with acid base imbalances in first semester. And I want you to understand why the treatments are what they are and what you can do about it and what you can watch for. We'll also talk about all the factors that affect blood pressure. You guys, this is a crucial concept to understand. Probably the concept I use the most as a nurse, and I'm not even kidding. This one and oxygenation. So if you want to review two concepts, do those. And I should add one on oxygenation, and I will, I will, I will do that because that would be super helpful. Okay, let's go back to our categories. And then we're going to prepare like a nurse. And you guys, this is, you know, my favorite part, getting organized for school. So in this module, we're going to be getting prepared for nursing school, okay? I'm going to teach you ways to get organized. We'll even have a live workshop. I did it for the first time with the last enrollment group. And we got on a live Zoom session and for about an hour and a half and we put our binders together we um, made our master lists we organized our digital files we did all that in a workshop together and we'll be doing that again with this next group with you guys okay and then let's see what's after this one i want to show you there's a step by step and look check it out more downloads more checklists because i know you guys love that stuff and I believe we're getting towards the end. Um, and at the very end, you guys, I don't want you to miss this section. There's references, there's recommended resources, you know, some valuable things in that segment as well.